You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Everybody, thanks for tuning in to June's Cameras Rolling. I'm really excited about my guest because I can't believe it. I've had this show for about 13, 13 years now. So I, I consider myself sort of an old hand as far as knowing the theater and stuff. But my guest is like really, really knowledgeable in everything. And he's going to be a very familiar face especially if you have a cup of coffee right now, because it's Frank Rizzo, who was with the Hartford Current for 34 30, years. 33 years. 33 years. So it's so nice to have so you here. So 13 years, that's nothing. That's you're nothing. You're it's a just kid. nothing. I, I, I'm but a babe in the woods right that's now. That's right. That's right. You've got another 20 or 30 years to go. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. It's, it's great Not to have all. you here. So, yeah, so we're all, we're all used to your face. I loved reading all of your reviews and your... Your, your musings? I, I loved writing them, and uh, the uh, Hartford Current gig was the best job in the world. I had it for a long time, and I did so many different things, uh, from reviewing to uh, feature stories to hard news reporting on the arts scene. We treated the arts community like hard news, so when Robert Maplethorpe uh, exhibit uh, was closed down in Cincinnati after it was a huge success in uh, Hartford at the Athenaeum. Mm -hmm. We were there for the, uh, for the closing, for the trial. We covered the NEA for the, in Washington, D.C. at the Supreme Court when um, uh, uh, there was a controversy uh, over the National Endowment for the Arts. And just uh, the life and times of all the regional theaters in, in Connecticut. We're so incredibly lucky. We are lucky, to yes. To have all these Tony Award winning theaters. It's and, incredible. And it's wonderful. And what, one of the great things I loved about re reading your, your articles was that it, it made me feel lucky. I, I, I didn't feel like, oh, I have to drive to New York City to really get the, the culture and, and the whole ambiance of it. It's right here. Not only that, uh, if you see shows in, in Connecticut, especially all these word premieres by first class artists, you see them before know, they go to like New York. Gentleman, the, Gentleman the, Guide to Love and Murder. Yeah. Now Anastasia's on Broadway. It began at Hartford Stage. Indecence on Broadway. That began at Ear Repertory Theater. But not just the shows, the, the performers. You can see them on the Tony Awards. And you go, oh, I remember when that actor was at Long Wharf Theater. Yeah. Oh, I remember when I saw that actor at the Goodspeed Opera House. Right, right. So, uh, you know, we're, we're so lucky to have good, good things. Of course, sometimes uh, they're not always as great as we hope. Right. But that's that's. You <laughs> but know, that's but that's where where that's you help of, save us. <laughs> well, save us, but also it's it's part of the process. Yeah. That's part of the fun going to a show and seeing something that only you have seen. Right. I remember when Water by the Spoonful had its word premiere at Hartford Stage about four or five years ago, and it opened in the middle of a hurricane. And it was such a wonderful play. But because of the hurricane, not many people saw it. The New York critics, who sometimes come to review, they stayed away. And then it won the Pulitzer Prize. And only the people at Hartford Stage, that audience that believed in new plays, right. were the only people in America who who saw what that play was that won the Pulitzer Prize. Everyone would, was going around saying, what's water by the spoonful? Yeah. And Hartford people could say, oh, I saw that. It was wonderful. I, 
we're like, who knew? Yeah, who and that's knew? and that's why we're we're really lucky to have you. Now I feel really lucky that you're with the current for so long, but now you're doing other things. So I, yeah, I, I, people, let, let's hear about your adventures part, and part, endeavors. <laughs> part of my job is telling people I'm not retired. I know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm not that old. Well, yeah, I am that old, but uh, I, I still I. I remember a joke that Elaine Stritch told me about the aging hooker. And, <laughs> and Elaine said, did you hear about the joke about the aging hooker? I said, no. She said, there was this old hooker called Shirley. And, uh, and one of her friends said, Shirley, um, how can you still be in the business? And Shirley said, honey, it's not the work, it's the stairs. And that's how I feel. It's not the work. I love going to the theater. I love writing about the theater. Sometimes yes. getting into the car, driving. Yes, yes. Uh, that's the hard part. Exactly. But, exactly. Uh, but the job is, I still feel like I'm just starting out. Oh, that's but, the, but the freelance work is great. I, I merely took a buyout at the Hartford Current, but uh, now I'm freelancing, including at, at the back at the Hartford Current and at Hartford Magazine, which the Hartford Current publishes. But uh, my main, uh, one of my main freelance jobs is as a theater critic for Variety. Mm -hmm. So I review a lot of New York shows. Actually, I re-reviewed Anastasia uh, when it was back on Broadway and as well as a number of other shows recently that was on Broadway. And, uh, and uh, that's a great gig because uh, now I'm reviewing shows in New York that are you know, major national shows. Uh, but I'm also having a regular column for Connecticut Magazine, a theater column, and I also write feature stories. Oh, what else do I write? I uh, write f regularly for the five Hearst newspapers of Connecticut. I write for American Theater Magazine, sometimes the New York Times. So uh, I'm a... I'm and, a yeah, and you've written for the Sondheim, the... Sondheim Review yeah. and, and a few other smaller publications. So I'm, I'm as busy as ever, and but the variety is a lot, uh, yeah. a lot more all over the place Right, now. right. Except people who generally just look to the Hartford Current don't know of all these, the other works that I do. So I established this new website. That, that, I was gonna say, that, that is the perfect segue because my, my next question is, Frank, where do we read all your writings? Well, uh, now there's a place. Yes. I, I have a website that's a lot of fun. It's the same as my Twitter handle, which is showriz.com. It's as simple as that. And there you could go not only to read all my reviews uh, and my stories for all the publications I work for, but once in a while, I uh, actually I just wrote something today that no one else had uh, about uh, something new that was happening at the O'Neill Center. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so I still once in a while uh, do some brand new breaking news reporting. So uh, you can look at my old stuff, you can look at my new stuff, and you can look at stuff that uh, only you will be uh, learning about. Right. Well, you know, one of the things that I'm so excited about, yeah, especially because I felt like I've gotten to know you, reading you in the heart, in the current for so long. So I feel like it's it, it's kind of a friend who, who can lead me to the right place. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, when I left the current, I, I had to choose, you know, my goodbye photo, and um, I decided uh, to choose, sometimes in the last few years of the current, what I did on Twitter, I said, anyone want to come with me to go to the theater on opening night? Uh, so I would just get theater lovers saying, yeah, you know, can I come with you? And I would just pick one at random and, and, and we would go to the theater together. And I had such a great time with just regular folks joining me. Right. And so I chose that picture of that selfie that I took of me and uh, just a, a member of the audience that just loved going to the theater is the uh, uh, person that I want to, not a big celebrity, but just an, just an audience member, because I'm, I feel like I'm just an audience member too. Just one who's maybe a little bit more in the know and know 
what uh, goes on behind the curtain. Well, you know, I was going to ask you, so uh, what, what's it like? Do you, do you miss the, uh, the sort of small towner feeling of being with the curtain now, now that you're going to New York City a lot? Does it feel like more pressure? Or, no, you know? actually I can pick and choose the assignment and that's the part oh, I love the best. You're golden, I'm aren't you? Golden. I could say, mm, I don't think <laughs> I'll take that one. But that uh, Oh, an interview with Sean Leonard, uh, Robert Sean Leonard at, at his home. I'll do okay. that. Oh, Peter <laughs> Max at his uh, art studio, New York. Right. I'll take that. Or Moses Pendleton spending the afternoon with him. Uh, Moses is the artistic director of the dance company Momix. Mm. That is fantastic. Uh, I've known Moses and Cynthia Quinn, his wife, for decades now. And, uh, and have written many stories about them. But the opportunity to... Uh, spend an afternoon with Jacques Pepin mm -hmm. in his home in uh, Madison. Can, uh, we, uh, I wrote a story for Hartford Magazine this month because there's a PBS special on him coming up at the end of May that's going to be repeated. And what is, what, what is he to? I don't know. Uh, Jacques Pepin is a fantastic French chef. He's retired now, but he's, he's written so many books and has so many uh, 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 food programs. So, so foodies know him big foodies time. Foodies know him he's big a, time. He's, he's a foodie rock star. He's a foodie yes. rock star. He lives in Connecticut, and he's as charming as can be. Aww. So I spent an afternoon with him recently, uh, and it brought to mind one of my favorite interviews. I, use, I used to have a problem when people said, well, who's the... Most famous, uh, who's the your favorite interview of all the people you've ever interviewed? I, I can relate to that just even in my show. I can I, relate to people I've, I've interviewed that, yeah. Elizabeth Taylor, Lillian mm -hmm. Gish, uh, yeah. all sorts of celebrities, Rock Cuts and Angela Lansbury. But I can honestly say my favorite one was spending an afternoon with Julia Child in her kitchen in Cambridge where she made me lunch and we drank a bottle of wine together. And so uh, that is one of my favorite experiences uh, because who doesn't love Julia Child? Uh. And actually, a good runner-up to that is spending an afternoon at her apartment in Washington Heights with Dr. Ruth. Because oh, did you did you see her play when she was at theater? Works? Yes, I did. Oh, That's it. She's so cute. She's 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 adorable and, and sharp. she yes. and she's sharp and she's just as feisty and fun mm -hmm. and smart uh, as, as she was at the height of her career. Uh, she's, she's, she's just a dear, dear person right. and an, a writer's dream. Well, yeah, speaking of dreams, I mean, you've, you have a lot to just feel gratitude about. I mean, you really have a wonderful, wonderful job. And I know that theater is your passion. So let's go back. Now, you were born in Massachusetts, right? Maynard, Massachusetts, a little to, mill town to outside little of Boston. Frankie. Little Francis. <laughs> Francis, okay. Francis, Francis Jude. Oh, Francis Jude. Okay. Francis Jude Rizzo in Maine, uh -huh. Massachusetts. And my first byline was 51 years ago. Uh, first paid byline. Uh -huh. uh, I was in high school, and they were looking for a weekly columnist to uh, a, young, a young, they wanted a young person to write the, about youth of today. Mm -hmm. So I was youth of today uh, in 1966. <laughs> uh, but once I saw which, my- Which is, I'm sure, a very exciting time to, to be a youth. That's right. Uh, yeah. But uh, once I saw my name in print, there was no going back. Well, well as far as theater, what-, what I ignited always, your love of theater. Where, always, have you ever performed? Yeah, or? Yes, actually, I, I went to uh, uh, college at the University of Arizona. I majored in journalism, but I minored in uh, theater. Oh, but cool. when I went to grad school, I went to grad school on a playwriting, a Schubert playwriting fellowship. So there was a time where I almost became a playwright. I considered it. But my first love was writing about the theater. Mm -hmm. not so I was always uh, on the outside looking in, which is, which is perfectly fine, because I, I so enjoy being the observer of things, because it allows you to um, just uh, be the writer you want to be right. and try to give the reader something that no one else is seeing. 
Right, but uh, but your your education afforded you to really understand actors more too. Absolutely, and I'm married to an actor, oh, so there you uh, go. <laughs> there you go, and so I have a great sympathy yeah. for actors. Yeah. So I am always sure to ask about actor salaries and the act yeah. how the actors are being treated, and uh, and when I have to write a great review, it gives me incredible pleasure to. Uh, promote a certain new talent in this. Yes. Uh, but it also pains me when I don't. I was gonna say, yeah, just just out of curiosity, say it's say it's a little scathing. It's mm -hmm. something that the actor may not want to read. Do you ever pass it through your, your spouse first to say, is this to me? No. You don't? Oh man, no, you are committed. No, no, because See, I, I don't want him to be an it. enabler. I, <laughs> I want him to be able to say to all his other friends, I have nothing to do with Oh yeah, that. And, and say that with, with total honesty. <laughs> right, but, uh, but just uh, being married, or, or just knowing anyone in the theater and what they go through, and they devote their lives to the theater. Right, right. Uh, and believe me, the, you know, these uh, actors are not, uh, you know, they, they might be playing Hamlet and are giving you a performance that you're going to remember the rest of your life, but they're probably, you know, only, you know, getting a fraction of what you think they deserve. Right, right. So uh, they really do incredible uh, work and do not get the type of Broadway salaries or even movie salaries. Actually, uh, I think the movie studios should give uh, uh, theaters, not-profit theaters, uh, research and development money. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Because after all, the non-profit theaters create these artists. It does. Then they go to TV and uh, um, uh, movies, and these producers and studio heads are the beneficiary of all this talent that the not-for-profits really developed, okay. which is why it's important to support not-for-profit theater, because you're not just supporting the theater, you're supporting the talent yes. that will then move on to uh, entertain you on TV and right. in the movies and elsewhere. Right, right. Well, who, who inspired you when you were back at school and you knew you wanted to be a writer? Oh. Do you have any teachers or...? Um, I had terrific journalism teachers. I had a great playwriting teacher called Dr. Norman Fetter, who supported, uh, there's nothing better to have as someone saying, you have a voice. Uh, and it was in the age of new journalism. So to be told that the way you write, the way you see things, you have a unique perspective really gave me the confidence to continue and to, ve to develop that uh, voice and to develop that perspective. Uh, a lot of entertainment uh, journalism, you go into it, but a lot of it is pack journalism where everyone's doing the same story, everyone's doing the same advanced story. Um, but I always try to find something different, something human, uh, and so I, Whenever I can get a one-on-one -on -one that has some intimacy, I always love to interview uh, celebrities over dinner. Mm -hmm. Because when you break bread from, uh, with someone, it's, they just open up. Right. Of course, a bottle of scotch helps, too. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I think that that's just so important. I, I, I think one of the things that I've been able to read in your works is that you have such a, um, a respect and love for, for the creative arts, not, not the salacious or, you know, the, the fame part of it, yeah. just for the creative arts itself. It's so important and vital to our society I'm, now. I'm fascinated with what makes people tick. Uh, when I'm, I've interviewed Mandy Patinkin in his home like four times over the last 40 years, and each time is different, and each time he just opened up and told me things about his life that... Uh, that it almost felt really personal mm -hmm. and and uh, and very special. Right. So I was honored that he trusted me right. to tell me the perspectives that he has uh, each time I have interviewed him, and that was I was able to share that with the readers, and, that, and I think they get a sense of that whenever oh, I definitely. write a story definitely. Uh, about it. But so, wh oh, but one of the things I wanted we we only have about ten minutes okay. left, and you've done so much. Hamilton the musical, <gasps> the 
tell me what you're doing and I have to be in that class. Well, when people ask me, like, what is your uh, favorite interview, Julia Child, they also ask me, what, what is your favorite show that you've ever seen, which is an impossible right. uh, answer until now. Until I really Hamilton. can say Hamilton is the best show I've ever seen in my half century theater going life. Uh, up until then, I think perhaps Chorus Line, uh, because it was that revolutionary, but this one is really revolutionary. Yeah. And people uh, love it, even if they haven't seen it, uh, they respond to it, because now the the album is out, oh, yeah, my, the clips my, are out. My daughter knows all the songs, and so, she's never seen the play. So yeah. now that I'm a freelancer, the University of Hartford, uh, for their President's College, which is their continuing education program, asked me to do uh, a class, so I wanted to do something really cool. So I thought, ooh, I've interviewed Lynn Manuel Miranda many times over the years, Tommy Kao, the director of the show. Uh, I'm, I'm going to choose Hamilton. And it sold out immediately. They asked me back again, put me in a bigger room, sold out immediately, asked me back a third time. And uh, I just finished uh, teaching it uh, at the Mark Twain House in Hartford. We had more than 100 people uh, show up for those sessions. It was a lot of fun. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be teaching it as a full undergraduate class next spring at Quinnipiac College. So now, can, can we get that information going to show Riz? Uh, when or the time where, comes. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can uh, find it first at show Riz. Good, okay. Uh, because I'll probably be teaching it again, if not at the University of Hartford for a fourth time, then certainly someplace else. And don't forget, it's coming to the Bushnell, probably. I wouldn't be surprised if it would it's going to get to Hartford at the end of 2018. Oh. They, it's officially uh, for the 18-19 season. But I would, I would say, you know, at the end of the year is my guess. Right. And I'm a good guesser. Oh, good. Well, uh, I hope so. And it's going to be here for three weeks. And, Which is uh, so and, long And there. subscribers get first dibs on it. But uh, the producers have ensured that at least 50% of the tickets will go for single tickets. So um, get your checkbook out. Exactly. Oh, uh, that's but, exciting. But it'll be a lot of fun to take the uh, take the, my Hamilton class a month or two before so, it. Yes, yeah, so you get really, really jazzed up for it. Yeah. So when you go to the show and spend all that money, uh, <laughs> you will really uh, be ahead of the game. Yeah, definitely. So tell me more. Like, okay, so you're doing that. You're doing your writing. You also, there's some pictures of actors that we're having um, displayed throughout our interview. Mm -hmm. tell, share some of your stories about that. Oh, well, um, I, I want to plug a few people here. Sure. Uh, whenever there's a local person, a person from Connecticut or from the Hartford area, that I really feel is extraordinary, has a career. Nothing pleases me more to be, um, a, I don't want to say a cheerleader, but uh, help a supporter, promote. help promote. Christopher Shin is a playwright. He grew up in Wethersfield. He was born in Hartford. He's one of America's best playwrights. And what's his name? Christopher Shin. A uh, number of plays have been done at Hartford Stage of, and Theatre Works. And he's has an, uh, he does a lot of work in London, uh, and um, and he's a he's a terrific writer, mm. uh, a finalist for the uh, Pulitzer Prize. Uh, another person from West Hartford, uh, who I've been trying to interview for years, and I finally did not too long ago. That's James Naughton, and uh, wait, I have to write this. <laughs> Two-time two Tony Award winner. James uh, Naughton? Oh, my. James Naughton. And his daughter, Kira Naughton, is a terrific actress. So I had the opportunity to interview them both together. And that was a blast. Here in West Hartford. And, uh, and so that was one of my favorite interviews. Oh. Justin Paul, uh, who's the composer of the hottest show on Broadway right now after Hamilton, Dear Evan Hansen. He's the composer of Dear Evan Hansen. His name is Justin Paul. He grew up in Westport, but his father's a minister in, in um, Hartford. Uh, and he just won an Oscar because he, he and his part, writing partner, Benj Pasek, uh, just wrote the lyrics to La La Land. So they were on stage 
accepting the Oscar for La La Land. Yeah. They might be on stage accepting the Tony Award for Dear Evan Hansen. And maybe they'll win an Emmy next year because they also wrote a Christmas story that is going to be done live in December on, on TV. Wow. You so, really do bring a full circle, don't you? Oh. And I, and I just yeah. feel so good about living here. What's great is in Connecticut, especially uh, a person like myself that has been here so long, I can really connect the dots and, and go, oh, I remember when he, when, when Justin Paul was doing a new show based on James and the Giant Peach at the Goodspeed Opera House five years ago. And now he's going to be probably winning a Tony Award for Dear Evan Hansen, the hottest show outside of Hamilton on Broadway right now. But, but Broadway is perking with Connecticut people. Yeah, that's, that's just amazing to me. I mean, it's just, it's so exciting. It uh, really is. When, when, when your uh, viewers watch the Tony Awards, uh, you know, next, in, in June, uh, Indecent is up for Best Play of the Year. Indecent had its world premiere last year at the Yale Repertory Theater. And um, Anastasia had its world premiere at the uh, Hartford stage last year. Mm -hmm. And it's up for a couple uh, Tony Awards. And uh, another musical called Come Fly Away is produced by Sue Frost, who for years was a producer at Goodspeed Opera House. Now she's a commercial producer. She lives in Old Lyme. She's a great gal and a terrific producer. And who knows, maybe her show will win a Tony Award for Best Musical. Right. And everyone in Connecticut can say, oh yeah, Connecticut, yeah, Connecticut. You know, yeah, because I always feel like, the, like we're the, the the ugly stepbrother of Boston and New York City. No. In, like in like terms, the black sheep of the family. Uh-uh. In terms of theater, <laughs> we're the pretty child. I get it now. We're, I feel really we're, special. We're batting your eyes. And I really appreciate that. No, Boston <laughs> theater-wise, thank God for Diane Paulus and the American Repertory Theater. But, um, no, I would say uh, Connecticut is one of the four greatest theater uh, geographical centers, right. uh, probably after Chicago and, well, Chicago, New York, maybe Washington, D.C., but then uh, Connecticut taken as a whole, uh, you can't beat. Right, right. So if you love theater, you know, this is where you have to well, be. Well, speaking of, of loving theater, I, I think a really, a nice ripple, another ripple that you create from your writings is that, you know, the, the arts are, are not being funded like they should be, and we're, we're all scared of the direction things are going. Getting the enthusiasm from reading your work really helps us contribute, so That's that right. is really important. But I try to make it fun. No, it's you very know, fun. I, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, you have to support the arts because it's good for you. You have to support the arts because it's great for you. Yes. That, that it's it makes great you for person. your kids. It makes mm -hmm. you a better person, makes you a smarter person. Makes you know, It's the best thing for kids, really, yeah. uh, on so many levels. But uh, I try to make the stories as fun as possible. One of my, my most delightful experience. It was right before I left The Current. I did a story on La Cage aux Folles uh, at the Goodspeed Opera House, and I decided to do something different. And for the first time in my life, I went drag. <laughs> uh, the sad... You were, you were probably really pretty. Well, I... Well, <laughs> that was, You've got nice cheekbones. That's the sad part. <laughs> Wow. I was hoping that I could be maybe, you know, I don't know, the next Beyonce. Or, right. <laughs> uh, remember Virginia Graham from the TV yes, show yes, Girl yes. Talk? That's who I looked like, <laughs> Virginia Graham. So I was a little disappointed on how my girl look turned out. <laughs> but it was a great experience to know what you have to go through to uh, you know, get up there on stage and, and give a hell of a show. Yeah, exactly. How and it is it's it's conquering a huge fear. Yeah. And and it, it all stems from that that need of approval and you want to be validated somehow. But we can read showriz.com showriz and we can stay in the loop. So I don't have to be sad anymore that that you're not with the current. No, but, right. but in a way I still am from time to time. So I haven't yes, gone completely. The, right. And uh, the stories I'm doing are just so, not, 
they're, they're all over the place. Yeah. I, I talk to chefs, I talk to uh, musicians, uh, but I still mostly talk to theater people because right. that's what I love best of all. Yeah. Well, and we and we love you for for what you do. Well, thank so, you. So thank you for coming. And one, one more gonna, plug. Oh, yeah, go ahead. One more plug. Come to the Connecticut Critics Circle Awards Show on June twenty sixth at uh, Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, the Edgerton Center for the Performing Arts. It's a free show. Three time Tony Award nominee Terrence. Um, a man is going to be the master of ceremonies and it's a fun show it's free and we give the awards out to uh, the best actors the best shows of, of the year it's it's a it's a fun and what is it again it's the it's an awards show that the Connecticut critics uh, give out every year and okay. we float around and this year we're in Fairfield but it's a free show, 7.30 on Monday, June 26th. Okay, mark your calendars. Mark your calendar. It's yeah. really, it was at the Hartford stage last year. We had the governor giving an award. We had... Uh, I'm really looking forward to my award. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, it's a lifetime, but we're giving it a lifetime achievement award, but you're still too young to be <laughs> yeah, doing that. <laughs> now I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next month.